the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Greetings on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. And we begin our Mass, the Mass in which we'll particularly remember Joan Peet, whose anniversary is tomorrow, Sunday, by lighting the fourth candle on the Advent wreath. Thank you, Emily. The readings. If John the Baptist is centre stage, and the Gospels are the second and the third um, Sundays of Advent, it's Mary who is now centre stage on the fourth Sunday. Not this time the Annunciation or the Conception, but rather the Visitation when she visits her cousin Elizabeth and as if the child in each womb greets the other. And the other readings where you also point towards the birth of Jesus. From the prophet Micah. You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, the least of the clans of Judah, out of you will be born for me the one who is to rule over Israel. His origin goes back to the distant past. And a reading which ends so powerfully. He himself will be peace. And then the letter to the Hebrews, more complex perhaps. This is what Christ said on coming into the world. God, here I am. I'm coming to obey your will. So, we begin this Mass, bringing everything with us that we've lived this Advent, this week, and praying for peace, and that we will allow He Himself to be our peace. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading is from the prophet Micah. The Lord says this, You, Bethlehem Ephrathah, the least of the clans of Judah. Out of you will be born for me, the one who is to rule over Israel. His origin goes back to the distant past, to the days of old. The Lord is therefore going to abandon them till the time comes when she who is to give birth, gives birth. Then the remnants of his brothers will come back to the sons of Israel. 
He will stand and feed his flock with the power of the Lord, with the majesty of the name of his God. They will live secure, for from then on he will extend his power to the ends of the land. He himself will be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. God, God of hosts, hosts bring, bring us back. back. Let, Let your, your face shine, shine on us and we, we shall, shall be saved. O shepherd of Israel, hear us. Shine forth from your cherubim throne. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God, God of hosts, bring us back. back. Let your, your face shine on us and we shall be saved. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. God, God of hosts, bring, bring us back. Let your face shine on us. us. And we shall be saved. May your hand be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength, and we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. reading from the letter to the Hebrews. This is what Christ said on coming into the world. You who wanted no sacrifice or oblation prepared a body for me. You took no pleasure in holocausts or sacrifices for sin. Then I said, just as I was commanded in the scroll of the book, God, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. Notice that he says first, you did not want what the law lays down as the things to be offered, that is, the sacrifices, the oblations, the holocausts, and the sacrifices for sin, and you took no pleasure in them. And then he says, here I am. I am coming to obey your will. He is abolishing the first sort to replace it with the second. And this will was for us to be made holy by the offering of his body made once and for all by Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be done to me. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now, as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. 
Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Nearly 20 years ago, when I was a parish priest in Fife, I used to meet a priest from the Arundel of Brighton Diocese, rather older than me, when he visited his sister in Kakodi. His name has gone from me for the moment. I've got to look it up and I haven't managed that yet. Um, although I know that he's since died. But I was very struck by something he said. That on the fourth Sunday of Advent, he always read a story to his parishioners. It made sense to me that an essential part of the Christmas season is this sense of mystery and wonder. And stories so often are better at evoking wonder than, say, lengthy, rather prosaic homilies. And his words set me on the path to creating my own tradition on the same lines, in that I like for the homily on the fourth Sunday of Advent to offer a guided meditation. So I invite people to close their eyes, take a deep breath, and lend in their imagination for a few minutes. I'm aware there's a significant minority switch off or never switch on to this. And that's okay. So if you want to have a little rest, do. But I want to invite you on this guided meditation and to picture the gospel. It probably helps to remember the background, which we find in the first and second chapters of Luke's gospel. Elizabeth and Zechariah, or Zechariah, are an elderly couple and childless. Zechariah is a priest in the Jerusalem temple. And while on duty there, he's visited by an angel and informed that he and Elizabeth will have a child. He is rather doubtful about this because, well, they're both pretty old. And for his pains, he's struck dumb. But then Elizabeth does conceive. And then, a few months later, Gabriel the Archangel visits Elizabeth's cousin Mary up north in Galilee and invites her to become the mother of the Saviour. Mary, again questioning, though perhaps in a slightly different way to Zechariah, she says yes, and she also conceives. And then we're told she sets off to visit Elizabeth in the hill country of Judea, 70 miles probably to the south. And this site um, is associated with the little village of Ein Karin, where there was a beautiful sculpture set up at the second millennium in 2000 um, of the encounter between Mary and Elizabeth. It's been described by the adventurous David McBride, Dennis McBride as follows. The two mothers greet one another with their eyes. And as they do, so their wombs are also in close contact. Elizabeth stands arms outstretched, a glowing exhibition of a mother-to-be. And Mary holds her own wombs. This isn't just the meeting of two pregnant women. It's also the meeting of two testaments, the old and the new, 
with the New Testament, having come to visit the Old Testament. There's also a meeting between two babies in the womb, John the Baptist, the last of the great prophets, and the greater one that he will herald, the one who is the Lord. So, if you'd like to sit up straight and take two or three long breaths and close your eyes, You're standing at the end of a dirt path leading to a simple house in a little village on top of a hill in Israel 2,000 years ago. There's a small garden at the end of the path and standing in the doorway is a woman who must be about 50, although she looks slightly older. She hasn't seen you yet, as there's a look of expectation in her face, as if she's waiting for somebody. And as you wait, you observe her and the surroundings. She's a lived-in face, a face that's known suffering, but remained kind and gentle. Amazingly, she seems quite heavily pregnant. And you realise it's Elizabeth. As you look at her, you become aware of the smile of the hint of a gentle breeze and the heat of the sun on your face. You look around and you see that there are three or four small clouds in the sky. And you notice also some beautiful red and yellow flowers under a solitary tree. You breathe in and smell the sweet fragrance of the flowers. You notice the birds too and how they seem to be enjoying the garden as they sing. As you look back at Elizabeth, she looks round at you, and she seems to read your mind. And she says, yes, I am waiting for somebody. I'm waiting for my young cousin Mary, who's coming to stay with me for a few weeks. And then you both hear a dog barking. Elizabeth breaks off as you turn and you see a figure come into view, walking quite slowly up the steep hill path. The figure of a young woman of medium height with a reflective face, very gentle. And you watch Elizabeth's face light up with love and happiness and a similar look on Mary's face as she catches sight of her cousin. Elizabeth comes down the path to meet Mary. They meet quite close to where you're standing and they fall into each other's arms. They hug for what seems quite a long time. 
and then they stand back a little from each other. And they look at each other with a mixture of joy and wonder, radiant in their different ways. And then, as you look, Elizabeth seems momentarily sort of knocked slightly off balance. She doubles up, uttering quite a loud cry, half pain, half joy, as you see in her face. And suddenly she's speaking to Mary. And she's saying, Mary, of all women, you are the most blessed. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And the two women embrace each other again. Their wounds touching. And then Mary steps back and begins to speak to Elizabeth, but to you too. She says slowly, My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He's looked on his servant in her loneliness. Henceforth, all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. They embrace again. And then they break off and they turn to you and they speak at the same time. Please share our joy. And you do try to share their joy. And you hug them both. And if you want to ask them a question, you do. And you listen to them as they respond to you. And you realise it's probably only fair to leave these two women together. So you say your farewells. You set off down the winding dirt path that Mary came up a short time ago. Before you get out of sight, you turn back and see them still standing there, still with awestruck faces, one talking, the other shaking her head. And you continue on. Through the countryside. When you're ready, you open your eyes and return here.
success of faith in Jesus Christ, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe in God the Father God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we look forward with joy to the birth of the Christ child, <coughs> let us open our hearts in prayer to him, and with confidence seek his ever generous assistance. Gospel, we read how the pregnant Mary was greeted with joy by her cousin Elizabeth. We pray for all women who are preparing for childbirth at this time, that the birth of their child be a safe and happy one for them and their families. We pray also that the lives of all children in the womb be respected and protected. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah, pray. We pray for Pope Francis, whose 85th birthday was on Friday. Help him in his efforts to reshape the church in the image and teaching of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, yeah, pray. Pray. May this Christmas time be an occasion of peace, harmony and joy among families. Let us remember too those for whom Christmas can be difficult, the lonely, the homeless, those suffering financial pressures, and people far from home and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the Omicron variant surges through the population and threatens to overwhelm our health services, we pray that, by following the guidelines, and using the tests as recommended by government and health advisors, we will contribute to a slowing down of the spread of COVID, and in particular, that our Christmas services be safe for those attending. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. As our church appears from its enveloping shroud of scaffolding, we give thanks for it as a place of prayer and community, as well as a much-loved Portobello landmark. May it continue to be so for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who were sick. Especially remember John Walk, in the last days of his life, in Ferryfield House. Pray for Sam Burns, seriously ill in the Royal Infirmary. Remember Jacqueline Marinello in the Western General. Pray for Mary Cole and all those in care homes. Pray for all those fighting illness and disease especially John Newell, Fiona Connell and John Freeman, and Sheila and George Service and Kim O'Neill and Sheila Dobson, and for Jean Bunner, for Andrew Farmer, for Michael Moran, critically ill, for Bridget Bunner and the Royal Infirmary, 
for John Slaven, and for Father Raymond of Nunro, for Tony Rigg, Caitlin McGilvery, and for Caroline Minto and Henrietta Fraser, for Pat Malvena, for Claire Johnston and Stuart Faulkner, and for Young Dee McDougall, for Igor Rokowski, and for all whose health were concerned about. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who've died, <clears throat> especially in this mass, around her anniversary, we pray for Joan and Pete. We pray for Dennis Davidson, who died last week, for Una Johnston, who died this week, for Adam Fraser. Remember Alan Dougal and Rhoda Tumbling. Pray for George Laram, and for Rob Moyes, for Evelyn Aldershaw, pray for Sue McDevitt, for Ian O'Brien, and for Mary Clancy, and Elizabeth Foster Melia, and Emma and Paul Williams, pray for Janie Lowe, and for Rupert Ridge, for David Tipper. Sally and Agnes Stone. We commend them all to the tenderness of our God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In silence, we offer the prayers of our own heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask Mary that we might remain close to her for the remainder of Advent and as we celebrate Christmas. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now. And that they are Amen. And we ask our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through Christ, our Lord, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It's by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity. He may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as with that end we acclaim. we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Leo our Bishop, the clergy and all who minister in your name. Remember your servant, Joan, whom you have called from this world to your son, from that she who is united with your son in death may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also John Mackenzie and Margaret Finch, and Adrian Elwood, and Kate and Graham Nielsen, and Margaret and Bill Chain, and Francis and Dennis Green, Father Andrew Hughes, and Sally O'Connor, 
Sister Rosemary and Isa McCafferty and Pauline Knowles and Kathleen Nanville and all our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and Rachel Kennedy, Gary Hall, and Alan Dougal and Yvonne Tainer and Jenny Wormel and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, St. Mary Magdalene, St. John the Evangelist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Saviour's invitation, we pray. Our Father, Amen. who Amen. art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share the peace of Christ with whoever we can and in whatever way we can. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you have promised to remain with us in the Eucharist 
and in the depths of our own hearts. Help us now to be still, to listen and to surrender ourselves to your loving presence. Heal what may be fractured. Sustain and strengthen us for the tasks of this day. Enable us to welcome the mystery of your presence in all those we meet. And in moments of quiet, may we rest in your love. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The notices. Times of Mass this week. Um, 10 o'clock, St. John's on Monday morning. 7 p.m. in the church on Tuesday evening, celebrating Rebecca Fonseca's first reconciliation. Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock, uh, St. John's. Thursday morning, 10 o'clock, it's Mary Magdalene's. And confession available after each of these Masses on reconciliation to be celebrated. Then, three Masses on Christmas Eve. 4.15 at St. Mary Magdalene's at Children's Mass. 6 o'clock at St. John's, um, which is already fully booked. And then 9 p.m., not 8.30, um, to keep everybody safer, um, at St. John's. Um, and then 10.30 on... Christmas Day morning at St. Mary Magdalene's. We do ask everybody to take a lateral flow test before coming. Um, 
and to keep a meter distancing. Um, and also to book. Um, you might well be able to get in if you haven't booked, but we can't guarantee that. And it does help us organize things if people are able and willing to book. Um, the church will be open at St. John's on each day this coming week from 9.15 to 3.45 if anybody wants to pop in. And I failed to highlight in the newsletter our ecumenical pilgrimage um, from the Catholics to the Baptists, the Episcopalians to the Presbyterians. Um, a walk with scripture passages and um, a carol as well in each church and a little refreshments outside PJPC. We hope that lots of people will participate. Night prayer each night, 9.15pm. Um, I must check if it's actually also on um, the Christmas Eve night. I think it probably is. Um, 915 And you can tune in online or you can, if you want, receive an email which will automatically be sent to you at 9 o'clock each night to remind you. There's no vigil mass next Saturday. No pre-recorded mass either next weekend. We have an urgent appeal for somebody to drive the Bethany, Bethany care van um, for, on Sunday the 26th. And the tower tombola draw Sunday morning 9.30. So lots to take in. It's all in your best-selling newsletter. Have a very good week and this final week of Advent amidst all the alarms. At least there's the beauty and the promise of the birth of Jesus. May it bring us all joy and peace and healing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.